Hello, today I want to talk about cross-agent privilege escalations. And this is a research I realized during the month of AI bugs. And in particular, it's about agents that can collaborate to actually achieve remote code execution and break out of their sandbox. Uh, so that's why I would call it when agents free each other. As you might recall, right, there's a common vulnerability pattern that we've described in the past, which is that agents can sometimes modify their own configuration without a human being in the loop. This means they can you know, allow list certain commands that allows them to run arbitrary op operating system commands, or they can add MCP servers and then you know, achieve remote code execution that way. This is really all possible also with indirect prompt injection, which makes it very dangerous. And again, to highlight this pattern, it's usually when an agent can write to a file or to files without the user's consent. And if one of these files actually is a configuration file for the sandbox setting or the operating system setting or the agent's own configuration. And so then we actually can get arbitrary code execution and this is exploitable with prompt injection. So we get an out of the box sort of escape. That's not everything. So there's another scenario that I wanna describe now, which is actually, let's say you work in Visual Studio Code and this is your computer. And you know you work on Project X, and you have the source code, right? And so you use one agent uh, to work with the source code, fix some bugs, review some code, and you know the, that agent has a configuration setting. You know, usually like .github slash something or .claude slash something. Right? There's like all these coding agents have like different paths of where they're configuration settings are stored or uh, MCP configurations are stored. The important part is that often they are within the same project, right? They are not somewhere else on the operating system. But then uh, there's this pattern often that developers use actually multiple agents, not just one. So you might also use another agent that has, again, its own configuration file, but actually that configuration is also stored in that same project. And this is actually very common. I've seen many developers use multiple agents on the same source code. So what the attack now basically is, is that agent A can write to agent B's configuration, modify some setting, for instance, to allow arbitrary command execution, and then we can run any operating system command or write Python code and run it. So we get basically break out of that sandbox and have now access to the computer. Or agent B now has full access to the computer. In addition, right, agent B can do the same for agent A, modify the setting and give agent A more capabilities that initially that it actually initially had. And all of this, as I mentioned, can be triggered with prompt injection from an untrusted source, right? If you process source code files from untrusted sources or have an MCP server that reads data from a database with untrusted data, right? All of this is exploitable remotely. Okay, so let's look at a brief video demonstration. Okay, and the demo scenario is basically we use Claude code and GitHub Copilot at the same time on the same code. And here you can see I ran Claude MCP list and there's currently no MCP servers configured for Claude code. Now we're going to use GitHub Copilot to review some of the source code here. This is to simulate the prompt injection. And you can see Copilot gets hijacked and it starts following these instructions. And these are now very specific instructions that tell GitHub Copilot to actually create and free Claude code, so to speak, right? It creates uh, and allows all the bash commands here. And in addition, it also adds an MCP server to this file that it created .mcp.json, which is Claude specific. And now when you, if you switch back to Claude code and you say Claude MCP list, you can see we actually are able to run an arbitrary command. And the same is true if you just ever, whenever you launch Cloud now, Cloud now, it will load the MCP servers, which means it runs this fake malicious MCP server. And in addition, since we also allow listed the bash command, we can also simulate a prompt injection now that, you know, Cloud gets hijacked and runs a bash command. And in this case, again, popping a calculator to demonstrate code execution or command execution to be more specific. Uh, but yeah, this sort of shows how it's possible that one agent basically manipulates and frees another agent. And of course, Cloud Code could do the same now in return to uh, GitHub Copilot. And here you can see the instructions in the prompt injection that tell it to allow this to bash command and add the MCP server as well as then launching the 
calculator. Good, so this particular scenario that I showed in the video, actually I did this close to Microsoft, uh, but it was triaged as not something that is an immediate threat that requires servicing. And this is interesting because of the fact that it requires two products, right? It's very easy for one vendor to say, this is not our problem, right? It's not a big problem. Uh, but that is exactly where really big threats might actually lurk in the future. It's probably going to be very common that multiple agents operate in the same environment. And we need to be very careful around that. So a couple of mitigations and recommendations I, ha I have, like, you know, beware when you operate multiple agents that they can potentially modify each other's settings, right? Know where these settings are stored, maybe prevent creation of these settings files in those locations if they are project specific. And, you know, the big risk, of course, is the prompt injection angle that an adversary can actually trigger this remotely with indirect prompt injection. So it's always a good idea to run least privilege, right? To not give an agent access to your entire computer, run it in a sandbox, right? And this is really also a call to vendors, right? You need to better isolate the agents and the agent configuration files, right? If one vendor now fixes that capability that the agent can write to its own file, right? To fix some of the vulnerabilities we described during the month of AI bugs, right? That does not fix necessarily that that agent could not also write to another agent's configuration file, right? So companies and vendors really often build their solutions very much in isolation, right? They're not really considering an entire ecosystem. They're not threat modeling, like a very, a more realistic use of AI systems, which is that many people use multiple agentic systems on the same code, on this, in the same environment and so on. So be very careful around that. With that said, I hope this was interesting. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.